the world of wine, the colors that usually dominate the conversation are red and white. But for the group of winemakers you are about to meet, it's all about the colors black and green. At this swanky soiree, there's a tantalizing array of gourmet foods and highly rated award-winning wines. Not an unusual combination in a sophisticated city like San Francisco, but this food and wine gathering is different because all of the food was prepared by a black chef and all the wines come from black vintners. My wife and I love wine and it was the, the process just intrigued me. So we made a little wine in the garage and next thing you know, we, you know, we've got a large facility and here we are. Long's Winery joins an estimated two dozen others owned by African Americans around the country. Most are located in California's wine regions of Napa, Sonoma, and Mendocino counties. But a few black wineries have sprouted in Los Angeles, Virginia, and New York. There are now people of black African descent making wines in South Africa, Canada, and New Zealand. Our vineyards are based in New Zealand, uh, but we also have an importing and distribution company here in California. So that allows us to be here in the market, engaging with our, our consumers and, you know, tasting them on wines and showing them what we're about. Are people shocked when they meet the two of you and find out that you're winemakers? Uh, every time, just about, yeah. Um, and, you know, we're proud to tell our story and, you know, it gives us an opportunity to introduce people to some new style of winemakers and people that are in the wine business. Steve Sterling's family has been in the wine business for more than 20 years. Their Esterliner Vineyards in California's Mendocino County is believed to be the largest black-owned winery in the country. Sterling says even though winemaking isn't an easy business, he believes it's a natural one for African Americans. I think people have to remember that African Americans started off in this country as farmers. And uh, farming is really the backbone of winemaking because you can't make good wines from bad grapes. So either you have to buy great grapes or you have to grow them. We were fortunate enough to be able to grow them and we also happen to be fortunate to have a history of winemaking in our family. Winemaking can be a very lucrative business. According to the Wine Institute, U.S. wine sales totaled almost $35 billion in 2012. But Sterling says only a small percentage of that revenue went to African Americans. I saw a recent report that there's 8,500 wineries in North America, and there's less than two dozen that are owned by African American families. So technically, I can understand how the wine industry doesn't think African American wineries exist, because technically and statistically, we don't. We're less than 0.001% of the wine industry. Um, but, as there, but we're not 0.001% um, of the population, and our demographics in our country are changing. What's going down besides beer? Bull. Bull. Despite changing demographics, the beverage industry still largely ignores African Americans when it comes to marketing fine wines, potentially passing up millions. In 2010, the estimated purchasing power of African Americans was 947 billion equal to over half the purchasing power of Canada. The beverage industry currently only markets um, hard alcohol and beer to people of color. And typically what they felt is that people of color don't have the income levels and the education to enjoy fine wine. And I just hope the vintners understand how incredibly a great opportunity for marketing their product among people who can actually afford to pay. Thank you. I don't think the overall market does realize how many are out here, but they should get to know it because there are some really good wines being made at these vendors, so I think they should really uh, go out there and find them. Some really good wines being consumed, too. Uh, most definitely. <laughs> David Lawrence, co-owner and chef at one of San Francisco's most popular gourmet restaurants, sees change ahead for African-American vendors. I just think that um, as we're, we're demanding more, we're demanding better restaurants, we're demanding better wines, and, uh, and our kids are getting into 
better restaurants, better wines, and, and want to be entrepreneurs in these endeavors. And I just think that it's just going to get better and better for us, and more and more of us are going to make wines and make good food, and I just think it's going to be fantastic. As fantastic as the wines produced by Black Vintners, being enjoyed by savvy consumers from your neighbor's house to the White House. So I'm getting ready to taste a wine that was featured for not just one president, but two presidents, President Obama and President Bush. If you would like to get a taste of that presidential wine or any others produced by African Americans, just go to our website where you'll find a list of black vintners. We'll be right back.